Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Pulse. I'm Marcel, your host. Um, I want to respond to some comments today. I'm going to get to the 10 most common questions people ask about NMN. But first, I want to address several comments that came in after my last video posted about creatine, the fact that I stopped creatine. I want to clarify some things that I, I did say in the video, but some people just didn't quite get. Some people got angry, you know, and said, how can you draw this conclusion? It's not logical. Again, I didn't say that creatine caused my recent shoulder injury or rotator cuff tear or exacerbated it. I just said I was getting stiff. Now, many people in the comments confirmed that they also had a similar result. What's exciting to hear is that my sort of suspicion that going down in dosage worked out for many people in the comments. There were many people that had a similar reaction to creatine. They experienced some stiffness. Uh, if you didn't see that video yet, that's what happened to me. I took creatine for two months. I took five grams a day. I was very excited with this bulking up that was happening. The muscular strength was great. The mass was improving. This is something that I've been wanting to explore after I lost a lot of weight on NMN and flavonoids. So I wanted to find something that would add good weight back to my body and creatine is definitely the ticket for that. Um, however, I got so stiff that I swung maybe a little too hard at some balls and uh, played a little bit maybe too muscular. Maybe it was just the way I performed because of the way I felt and this exacerbated this shoulder injury. Now, I stopped to give my body a pause and sort of get more flexible and loosen up. And I'm considering maybe in the next week or two starting creatine again, but at a much lower dosage. And I'm very encouraged by the fact that so many people had a similar result and then found that when they reduced the amount, they were doing much better. They found that right balance. One person said, hey, why don't you start with one gram a day and ease your way up? Um, I may do every other day. I may do a very low dosage per day, but I'm very encouraged by the comments. And these are so, I mean, there's so many great comments there. I could just tell you guys, I'll read you a few to highlight them, but I could just tell you, read the comments because watching this channel, you're just getting my perspective. But the perspective from all of you guys, both good and bad, even some of you that may get upset with me, it's great to hear it because it provides that balance and a wider, casting a wider net so that we can collect more information so that individually we can hopefully listen to our bodies and make better decisions that work for us. For me, what works for you is not necessarily going to work for me and everyone else. But through this comment process and this back and forth, and that's really why I wanted to take some time to respond to some of this. Now, some people said their weight increased. That was pretty common. Um, some people said it was also good for the brain. So that's great to hear. Yvonne, who's a menopausal woman, uh, reported a huge improvement in the gym after just a couple weeks. That is very cool. A lot of people said drink lots of water. I do drink a lot of water throughout the day, but you know I can always add a little bit more. Um, I think that's great advice. If you're going to take creatine, I think if you're taking any supplement program, you should drink a lot of water. That's pretty good advice in general for supplement takers. Some people also agreed with the concept of pulsing, saying you don't need every nutrient every day. I do believe that. I know that some people say, no, 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 take every day. But I'm all hip with the argument. I'm cool with the argument of, of pulsing. But again, you need to listen to your body. Some, someone said, hey, that doesn't really make sense. I don't, I don't understand what doesn't make sense about it. You need to know your body or you won't know. You won't know if something's helping or not. If you change the dosage of something and you get a more pronounced effect of whatever it is you feel like you were having, well, that's going to tell you a little bit more. That's going to double down on the concept of, oh, this is having an impact. And if I increase the dosage, I increase the impact. That's a pretty good signal that something is working. I also want to review quickly the amazing comments to the eyesight video that I did for NMN. That was really uh, astounding. So many people had improved eyesight from taking NMN 
uh, it caught me off guard. It really blew me away. The success of that video has been phenomenal. Uh, it's over 60,000 views now. I encourage you to watch that if you haven't already. But thank you guys so much for weighing in with amazing detailed stories about how their eyesight stopped degenerating. You know, they were able to stay with the prescription for years after taking NMN for two, three years. They had no change when they went to their eye doctors. Uh, some people's eyesight improved. A few people didn't need glasses anymore at all. Just astounding stuff. So you know, other thing I will say about that topic is sometimes, and certainly this happens to me, I think NMN, this lifestyle, this having energy all day long until night and then just crashing, uh, which is a great feeling because I, sometimes I wonder at 9 o'clock, how am I going to get to sleep tonight? I'm still so full of energy. Then 10, 10, 30 hits, boom, I crash. So this becomes a new normal, and we may forget that, you know, oh, wait a minute, it's NMN that's driving this, that's fueling this. I think that's a good thing. I think, you know, life, you shouldn't always be hyper aware that you've got more energy. You should just use that energy. Now, let me get to those 10 questions. Um, these are the most common things that I came up with that people ask me about NMN. Some of it you've heard before, but now I'm going to put it all together for you right here. People do ask where to buy it. Um, it's an understandable question. I can't really tell you specifically where it's best for you. I can tell you where not to buy it. Avoid Amazon. Now, fortunately, it's been taken off Amazon recently, so you don't have that option anymore, so you can't go wrong. But I would also avoid any resellers of NMN and go direct to the company that is packaging the NMN. Now, you can't go directly to EFA Farm and, and order it direct from China. So you do need to buy it from a company that markets it, tests it, packages it, sells it. But not a reseller, if that's of any assistance. I take Do Not Age NMN. I've taken it what I feel to be extraordinarily successfully for the past two years. I can vouch for thousands of people that are taking it based on comments and feedback on this channel. It just so happens Pro Health Longevity is another company that also sells EFA Farm NMN, and a lot of people here also take theirs. So that gives you a couple good options. Their pricing is competitive and they're reliable NMN. You, uh, I do have a discount code for Do Not Age, as many of you know, because many of you use it every single day. How much to take? I also really can't tell you specifically. I can just tell you what I did. I started at 500 milligrams, slowly went up, and I mean months, right? Slowly went up to one gram. If you don't go slow, and again, try to do one thing at a time so you know what something's doing. So if I'm increasing my NMN to a gram, I didn't start taking some other supplement at the same time. I allowed enough space so that I could experience what the change would be. Over time, I went all the way up to two grams and I ended up settling back down to 1.5 grams. I like how I feel at that amount. But what I can tell you, if I was you, and if I was starting from zero, I would start very low uh, and then ease your way up until you find your own comfort level because it's going to be different most likely than mine. A lot of people do ask, what do I take with it? I can only tell you that the research out there shows that TMG is very good for methylation if you're taking NMN. And TMG has a lot of its own health benefits in general. I've brought this up before, but it's just another reminder. This is a great opportune time to remind you that TMG goes well with NMN. And most people that I know that take NMN take TMG as well. In addition to that, you may want to try some sirtuin activator, whether or not you follow uh, the resveratrol debate out there. I had great results taking resveratrol. I now alternate with quercetin, and I take a couple times a week fizetin. These are all similar senolytics. They're flavonoids. There is great supportive safety data out there for all of these supplements that I'm mentioning. And I could say that if I was starting from zero, I would again revisit taking flavonoids. I like taking them. CAKG has been helpful to me. And now, as many of you know, I'm a big fan of creatine, even though I've paused the creatine for now. It definitely works. It's definitely very effective. I take collagen. I take CERT-6 activator. 
Um, so I do take a few other supplements. Apigenin's another one. I take quite a few things, but I added them very slowly over time, and I'm not feeling any adverse effects. So most of it's positive. Some of these things I feel right away when I take them. Um, Enamin is definitely one of those. Creatine was definitely one of those, and a, and a few of these others like Fizetin. How do you know it works? Now, I think it's fair that a lot of people ask me, how do you know it's working? How do you know? That's a totally fair question. Uh, how do I know it's working? Well, because I've stopped taking it and felt my benefits diminish. I've slowly, as I said, increased the dosage and felt my benefits increase as well. I've also interacted with literally thousands of people over the past two years through this channel and heard their stories as well. And I've conversed with many different NMN sellers and heard their stories from their own customers as well. So I'm personally confident that it quote unquote works. However, some people don't get results. So if you're not getting results, there's either some underlying issue that's, that's holding you back or you're not measuring your results properly, right? Only what you feel doesn't mean that you're not getting results. Your eyesight can slowly improve over time. Some people posted on the eyesight video that eyesight was the only thing they, that they saw change, right? They didn't feel more energy, but their eyesight did slowly improve. Um, there can be other things like inflammation and biomarkers that you can have tested before and after in a regular blood test. And you can you could experience the benefits or have benefits without necessarily feeling benefits. So it's a little tricky there. Now, only 10 to 20% of viewers say they're not feeling anything. Now, are they taking a high enough dosage? Are they taking it long enough? I don't know. Fortunately, about 80% report the kinds of improvements that I'm having. So chances are, if you start in a minute, you're gonna also do well. What form to take? The biggest question is powder or capsule. Um, either one is said to work based on the science. I prefer the powder for a number of reasons. I can change the dosage easily. Um, it's more cost effective to take the powder, buy it as powder. I like that it can get into the mucous glands, into the sinuses, and the sinus tract, the brain, much more easily through the bloodstream in the mouth. Entering the mucous glands in the mouth, I think it's beneficial. But, you know, some people feel you just need to take capsule or some people just don't like taking the powder under their tongue sublingually as I take it. So it's kind of up to you, but I take the powder. Liposomal form, you know, is that valid? Is that a good form? I've looked into this quite a bit and I don't want to disparage any companies selling liposomal. I can just tell you that the companies I have talked to have said we, that don't sell liposomal, I say, why? And they say, because we think it's a ploy to put less NMN in the capsule and therefore increase your profit margin. Now, liposomal has some medical benefits. So what I would say is if you're having, or if you already have digestive issues and you want to take NMN, maybe you try liposomal form, you know, maybe you try the regular form. And if that exacerbates any digestive issues, you go to liposomal that could bypass the digestive tract and it might be a good thing for you. So again, it's not a one size fits all question. What happens if I stop? Um, frankly, from my discussions with people that test people that take NMN, um, your, your benefits will stop, right? It's, it's a maintenance program. If you're taking NMN and you're having arthritis improvement, right? Less pain from arthritis, better mobility, and you stop taking NMN, those problems are gonna come back. I mean, that's that's from talking to people that talk to lots of people that have such issues. So unfortunately, it's a maintenance program. Fortunately, it's still available. FDA has made attempts to make it an exclusive drug, um, but they've not been successful yet. So hopefully it remains on the market and you know you have that option to continue NMN as a maintenance program. What age should I start taking it? This comes up, I've covered it before, but it's a moving target. The longer I take NMN, the more comfortable I am taking it and I would go back and tell my younger self at an earlier and earlier time, right now, 
I'd probably go back to when I was 35, 36 and say, why don't you start a small dosage or begin living an NMN lifestyle, which means exercise more, reduce the sugar, reduce alcohol, do the other kinds of things that recycle NAD in your body, which is what NMN will do. It raises NAD levels. So I would encourage myself to do those things and then maybe start adding a small dosage of NMN and increase that every few years. That's what I would do. When I first started, I was thinking, well, 50 would have been a good time to start taking it. I started taking it at 55, um, and I've had a lot of great results. I would go back to even the late 30s, knowing what I know now, seeing what I've seen, and also talking with people and conversing with people who do take it at a young age and have had a lot of improvements as well. Now, here's a big question that comes up. Cancer. Will it cause cancer? Well, I can't say definitively, but there's no scientific evidence that shows NMN or NR cause cancer. But it's always a concern. And if you have a risk, if you have a high risk, you should definitely have regular checkups and maybe start with a very small dosage if you're going to take it. But what I can say is I've conversed with these many people that I've told you from time to time, there are people that had cancer or are taking medications for a previous cancer and they were able to reduce their medication based on blood tests. This happened to a close relative of mine who had thyroid cancer a few years back. She's now taking less thyroid medication after just two and a half months of NMN. So it can cut both ways. It can maybe reduce some of the pretty strong medications that people have to take. Um, it's going to change individual to individual, but I would say I've heard a lot of arguments out there that support NMN can fight cancer and prevent cancer. I've heard a lot more evidence from various scientists that show that to be the case, like Charles Brenner or uh, talking to Dr. Xi. Um, there are heart doctors I've talked to. Cancer is always a concern. If you've had it, you definitely, anything you change in your diet or your supplement routine, consult with your doctor. Uh, I hope this has helped some of you, maybe as a refresher or maybe as a consolidated information delivery. <laughs> um, these are the top 10 things people ask, and I think they're all great questions. Thanks for watching. See you all soon.